Hi guys, welcome to Little Reptile TV and this is our very first episode of Get to Know Your Reptile featuring one of the most common and recognisable of Australian lizards, the bobtail. So, my name is Gregor. And I'm Beck. and here today we have Chili and Cherry, two of the scaly residents here at the WA Reptile Park. Now, if you've grown up here in Western Australia like we have, you've probably heard them being referred to as a bobtail. But depending on where you live, either internationally or even in Australia, these guys are known by many, many different names. For example, they're most commonly referred to as a shingleback, but they're also known as stumpy tail, sleepy lizards, pine cone, or even the boggy lizard. But I do often hear these guys being referred to as a blue tongue, which isn't entirely correct. The bobtail and the blue tongue do share the same genus, which is Taliqua, and they both have a blue tongue, but they're actually a completely different species. So think of them sort of like cousins. And when you put some of the different blue tongue species together, you can see that they all share two things in common. Their smooth, flat scales and long, pointy tail. Whereas the bobtails, on the other hand, no matter what colour or size, all have large, bumpy scales and a shorter, rounded tail. So it's easy to tell the two species apart. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to know the bobtail. So. Bobtails are one of the most common lizards you're going to find around here in the Perth region from going out into the bush, national parks and even the right time of the year you might even find them in your own backyard. Generally a quiet lizard and it'll mind its own business unless it's harassed then it'll go into a defensive stance usually curling up into a U shape, puffing itself up, hissing, flaring out that deep blue coloured tongue and it's trying to tell you two things, I'm scared and leave me alone. Remember, as humans, we're about a thousand times their size. So, from a bobtail's point of view, we must look like Godzilla or a T-Rex walking up to it. So yeah, if I were a bobtail, I'd be pretty scared too. Now, it's long believed that bobtails use their short, fat tails as a sort of defense against predators. But it's not quite true, for a few reasons. Apparently, it's to look like the head. But in some parts of Australia, for example here in WA, they don't always have a tail that looks like the head. Secondly, they're quick to show off which end is ahead by showing you their tongue. And finally, unlike some other lizards, bobtails can't actually drop their tails. The main reason that bobtails have short, fat tails is to store well just that, fat. This fat is broken down during winter into food and water, which means that they don't have to come out looking for food during the colder parts of the year. They do, however, use their mouth as a defense mechanism, not only to try and bite potential predators or threats, but they also flare out that big blue tongue of theirs. Studies have actually shown that the cells in the mouth of a blue tongue reflect UV or ultraviolet light, which birds can see, but we can't. So imagine having a giant spotlight shine straight into your eyes, which dazzles potential predators, deterring them away from the bobtail. Now let's take a look at where you can find these guys naturally in the wild. You can see them along the southern coastline of Australia and up along the western side of the Great Dividing Range. Bobtails are especially adapted to the colder parts of Australia, as indicated by their thick insulating scales. Their colorations can range from a dark to almost black in the southern areas, where in the northern region you can get an orange to almost red colour. Now, like what we touched on earlier, their typical environment can range from low shrubby bushlands and anywhere from sand dunes, beaches, hills, and even forest areas. Now, there's where things can get quite interesting when it comes to bobtails here. Most lizards that you can get as pets here in Australia will live anywhere from a range of 10, 20 years, obviously depends on the species, Bobtails, however, over 50 years in captivity, and that's five with a zero. In rare cases, some captive or pet bobtails can even live closer to 60 years. So yeah, they live quite a long time. But in the wild, 40 plus, that's getting quite old for them. Of course, a lot of animals will live a lot longer in captivity. Take Grandma here, for instance. She's closer to 50 years of age, and that's purely down to the fact that she doesn't have to deal with the same stresses that she would deal with in the wild. Stresses like predators, such as cats, birds, dogs, foxes, even snakes. They can feel the pressure of land clearing and habitat loss, seasonal changes, and even cars and lawnmowers pose a large threat to these guys. 
Yes, unfortunately it happens all too often with these guys that people will accidentally run them over and of course not all of them survive. But thanks to dedicated men and women in wildlife hospitals and wildlife carers, these guys have a much better chance of survival. Now these guys like a wide variety of different foods, from soft things like flowers, fruits and vegetables, to even bananas, strawberries and tomatoes. My pet bobtail mooncake here, his favourite foods are blueberries and mushrooms. And even though they typically go for soft foods, they actually have a strong enough jaw that can break through the hard shells of snails and even bird eggs. But surprisingly, they don't actually have any teeth. Well, not in the traditional way. They do, however, have a set of bony ridges that run along the inside of their mouth. Bobtails basically see the world by tasting it with their tongues, which is how they find their food. In saying this, they're not fussy eaters. They'll eat anything from dried dog and cat biscuits to even baby mice. As long as they don't have to chase it or chew it because they don't have the same grindy teeth that we do, they'll give it a go. And finally, let's talk about two of our favourite facts about bobtails. Firstly, bobtails in the wild are actually monogamous, which means that they'll only have one partner their entire lives, which is virtually unheard of within the reptile world. This indicates that bobtails have a much higher brain function than some other lizards, due to their ability to recognise their partner's face and even scales. Once paired up, the male can often be seen following the female around during breeding season. Males tend to fend off other male competition, usually by biting them on the head or simply chasing them away. Fun fact number two is that despite a lot of people believing that reptiles only lay eggs, bobtails and their cousins' blue tongues are actually what we call viviparous, which means that they are live-bearing, or in other words, they give birth to babies rather than laying eggs. Now something to take into consideration is the size of the babies, which average at about half the total length of the mum and they can have up to about three of them at a time. So yeah, I'll let you figure that one out. But it's normally the older and the bigger bobtails that can give birth to that many. When the babies come out, they're fully formed and ready to go, almost complete miniatures of the adults. They'll generally stick around with mum and dad for about six months to a year before heading off, unless there is enough food, water, and shelter in their current area, then they'll stick around. So we hope you've enjoyed getting to know the bobtail lizard. And as you can see, we love these guys here at Little Reptile TV. I mean, they're so interesting from the fact that they're essentially a walking trash can. They'll eat pretty much anything. They're live bearing and one of the few known monogamous reptiles. I actually have two pet bobtails at home. And in our opinion, they are one of the most underrated lizards that you can have as a pet. So if you're interested in learning more about how to look after these guys, tune into our next video. We'd love to thank our sponsors here at the West Australian Reptile Park for letting us use their animals and of course their facilities. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or stories about these guys and we'll answer them in another video. Thanks for watching Little Reptile TV. Like, subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like these. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. So as you... Oh. <laughs> so we hope you get So I hope <laughs> So we hope you've enjoyed getting to know the bobtail lizard. And as you can see here, we love these guys at Little Reptile TV. I mean, they're so interesting from the fact that they're essentially a walking trash can. They eat pretty much anything. The fact that they're live bearing and they're one of the only few known monogamous reptiles. <laughs> Again? Yeah.